honey soap because you know honey is made primarily out of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. So if you extract the hydrogen peroxide from honey and combine it with back into a little bit of honey carrier agent to keep it active and non-foaming, then mix it with your other ingredients into some honey soap or shampoo or whatever, then it'll foam up all nice and really bacterially eliminate. Yeah, because um, I'm suspicious of all foaming soap because traditionally soap didn't foam. It was yeah. made out of like oatmeal and animal milks and stuff. And you just, you know, use it to kind of abraze your skin. Yeah. Not foam all over the fucking place. Yeah. That's like a cleaning reaction to something being dirty in the project unless it's like honey. Then it's reacting to you being dirty. Yeah, so hydrogen peroxide from honey should be the trick. It, it, it'll dry out your hands eventually, maybe, but not really if you just use enough. It the should work. Sheer butter and yeah. other things. Whatever else. Yeah, uh, I guess that's. Hmm. I feel like I need to say something additional here, and I don't know what. Okay, let me try to uh, use the divine Native American ancestor genetics from the peyote through the DNA to combine colors and make an effect. Okay, um... You can add in some bee um, pollen. And oh, so yeah. That'd be good for people, so they get used to different types of stuff from bees. I guess what I was going to say was um, labels. Labels, if it foams, anything that foams need to, needs to say that it has a, uh, you know, like bee honey hydrogen peroxide yeah. source. They need to, everything needs to say sources, every plant, yes, everything, every, source. everything, every source. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. Potassium, it doesn't matter. Any metal, any, anything. It needs to say whether it was sourced like, from a plant, a yeah. open mine, something like that. And Ren Pure, like, some of their products are a little questionable, but better than everything else still. Some of their stuff's even better I'm using now, and like... They actually are finally now always going out of their way to say this is sourced from this every list. Like, you just have parentheses or whatever. You just say what it's sourced from after each ingredient. Same as with food products. I want a source on every single thing. You're yeah. not going to add anything in without giving me a fucking source. I'd even like an, uh, a location yeah. in the world where it came from. And when it says, like, spices, okay, fine. I don't. I guess I don't need, because it is food. It's a spice, but... You know, what if it says spices and they're throwing chemicals in there? It makes you scared. It makes you wonder. So I repeat, and I'm the most aggressive about this. From now on, I would like the policy to change, even yeah. governmentally, to where you just can't put fucking spices. You have to put spices and then say herbal next herbal, to them. Oh yeah. Like plant-derived fully. Like, you know. and Plant-derived. Plant if you... And if it's concentrated, because derived has to say means them, concentrated. And it has to say what way then? Yeah. It has to state it's concentrated and from what source, yeah. And yeah. to what degree. And exactly. It's, it's a lot of stuff does already. It'll say 8x, 20x, you know, what, what, how hard did they process it? And under a laboratory, you know, analyzation, how many molecules broke off of the structure chain down to what point to create what chemical from the plant this has all been done so yeah precisely and these needs to start appearing on the labels yeah. i don't i don't need to be the food and drug administration without getting paid form. they need to start fucking bucking up fucking up and fucking doing this shit yep scooby-doo this shit investigate you motherfuckers okay i made my dessert uh recently out of some sapota fruit powdered and um, upon getting it, I realized it was a banana that's a smaller ground fruit and or a smaller bush. And it um, has such a massive amount of potassium in it that uh, they use potassium for making soap, you know. They'll take it and saponify um, whatever oils to make them, you know, cleanse the skin while also not drying it too much. So I... I Highly suggest everybody start using Sapota fruit powder to extract their potassium because, boy, it's sure is uh, making my system full of potassium. You know, potassium is an explosive potentially, but so hence a cleaner if you do it right and uh, safely. Let's stop using any kind of sodium. I Because I suspect the Alafia stuff I've been getting is like kind of heavy on the gourd sodium. 
for my hands and body I've been using this summer. And, uh, yeah, let me just say it's felt African hot. And, uh... I'm starting to get, you know, a gourd butt, so let's stop that. Let's move on to something else. Like, not sodium at all. Just potassium, and there'll be other things after that. I don't know. Maybe potassium's not the best solution long-term. Probably not. Um, I always repeat It's glycerin soap, but glycerin's kind of hard on you. You can always adjust, and I repeat it over and over again. You can just, if you're so concerned for your skin health and you feel weak and tired, you can clean yourself with like herbal oils yeah. that are natural. And then you can have, you know, somebody scrape it off, like you rub it off with yeah. you know, different, like a towel and different things and like just get the dead skin cells off. Yeah. It does work. I mean, if I didn't have extra strong, you know, soap that I just get from Fred Meyer or anywhere, it's available everywhere, just whatever, Dr. Bronner's or something. You just get it at your store. So, like, um, that's got, like I was saying, potassium, hopefully not too, like, metallically produced or something, so it doesn't explode my skin, you know? Wear me out. Yeah, you don't want your skin blown up. That is what makes you age. Yeah. I guess I'm, uh, trying to avoid that aging thing. So, uh, we got to figure this out. Everybody's trying to avoid aging. Yeah. Okay, so glycerin soap isn't really that bad or anything. You know, it doesn't dehydrate you, really. It just kind of tears up your skin, right? Um, well, um, the concept of glycerin soap is people have a lot of, you know, partially unfriendly or moderately neutral there's all kinds of bacteria in their skin and body so you know lazy bacteria builds up in your skin and gets dirty and then you have to flush it out so ginger glycerin you know regular glycerins just aren't strong enough and it causes this effect where everybody says yeah totally bacteria will the glycerin, they'll think it's sweet, and then they won't be able to handle it, and it'll, like, you know, make them, like, go, ugh, I'm ew, I'm letting go of your skin. But then, like, that's silly, because most of the glycerins that use it aren't strong at all, but ginger's super strong. That's a great idea. You, you use Hawaiian ginger glycerin, that's yeah. what I used on my skin. They use that in, like, soap making, you know. Yeah, I'm just saying, because yeah. everybody needs to stop rubbing actual, like, ghost salt on their skin. Yeah. It's like phantom salt, dude. Yeah. My dude, it's phantom salt. It's not yeah. really from the sea, huh? But also, um, never mind. 